Hey everyone, it's Jen, and I am coming to you today from my living room because it is warm in here. And I have a pellet stove, which you can you might be able to hear it a little bit. It's kind of roaring in the background. And I am in here cozy because my office gets a little cold in the back of the house, and the pellet stove sometimes doesn't totally reach back there. So here I am today on the couch. And I am wearing my daughter's hat, which is really cool. As some of you know, I like to wear a hat during the winter pretty much all the time. Usually I have my trusty gray hat, but today I have my daughter's hat because I can't find my gray one. So she said, you can wear my hat. And I said, well, now, now that's awesome. So this is her actual Christmas hat that she got for Christmas. So I'm wearing that today. And um, I had somebody ask me, and uh, recently, how is it, and for those of you who don't know, um, four years ago I got a divorce, and um, I will just say a little disclaimer right here and now when I talk about divorce, I am not an advocate um, for divorce, but I'm also not an advocate for staying in a marriage no matter what. I think there are situations where it is appropriate and there are good reasons and um, anyways I can get more into my situation at another point but it was for the best for myself and my ex but of course the heartbreaking part is the children because they don't understand why and in our case especially they don't understand because we were never um, the type of couple that got into um, arguments and things like that in their view we weren't a couple that was fighting all the time and it was you know sometimes it's obvious that people are you know really unhappy and for me you wouldn't have known probably unless you really knew me if you really knew me you would have seen I became sort of more withdrawn I'm pretty social and outgoing but I kind of cut myself off from family and friends um, kind of isolated myself here in my house with my kids um, gained a lot of weight. I mean, we're talking like when I got married, I was tiny. I was probably like a size five. And then I went up to like, I mean, yes, I had two kids in the meantime, but still, I mean, I was always committed, ultra committed. I mean, I was in the gym every morning without fail, even if, you know, in my early 20s, I was out the night before partying until 2 a.m. I was still at the gym uh, at 8 or 9 a.m. And I just let it all go. I didn't care anymore. I let it go. And after I had my kids, I didn't, um, you know, care to really work on getting back in shape. And I went, oh my gosh, it must have been up to like a size 12 or a 14. And from a five, that's a big jump. So it was pretty scary. And um, so, like I said, those who knew me knew that I was not outwardly crying or upset, but it was sort of like inwardly, my soul was kind of dying a slow death. And that that story is a whole story for another time. I usually say that in my videos, right? Story for another blog or another time, because that is, um, that's part of my work. That's part of my work that I hope to bring to other people is to inspire them with some of my stories and my journey because so many people struggle with it. And I think so many people are in unhappy relationships and they're not even sure why. And they feel this um, this obligation to work on things. And I do believe, and I, you know, my ex-husband and I even did this. We went through counseling. We did the whole thing. So we didn't just say one day, oh, okay, I'm done with you. I'm all set. It was, you know, a process that we did work on things. And the truth of the matter is, and this is sort of getting off topic, but... I think that if somebody is working towards keep staying in a marriage no matter what, that can be appropriate if both people, when they got married, were their true, authentic selves. And many times what I feel happens is that when people get married, they're not their true, authentic selves. And this was certainly the case for me. I mean, anyone who knows me in my past knows that I was sort of a relationship kind of train wreck for a long time and um, always going after like the probably the wrong people for me and that was because only because I didn't know who I was and I wasn't being my authentic self so when I got married to my ex-husband I was not my true self and so I wasn't my true self probably would not have married him and not because he's a bad guy he's a really good sweet guy and there's nothing wrong with him at all it's just 
he it's just he wouldn't have been the one that authentic Jen would have been with not not that person so it's I feel like it was almost a marriage under false pretenses and probably for both of us on both of our parts I think we got married for the wrong reasons but that again that's a whole other story and part of my work and you can see if you go to my website I'm working on it right now it's under construction you can see it but I, I still have content that needs to go there so my website is www.freedomseekermama.com and my goal and my mission what I'm doing right now is trying to achieve what I call radical freedom and what that means is total freedom like the whole package radical because if something's radical you work on it like with all of your energy and all of your might and you don't give up it's just a crazy desire and that is what I'm working towards is total freedom and you can have freedom don't get me wrong you can have freedom in certain areas of your life you can be financially free but you might not be personally free or free in your relationships or maybe your health is deteriorating so you're not free in your body so I am looking for the whole package and what I have done is broken down what I call radical freedom into different parts and I am working on and I'm still a work in progress too I haven't got this down yet although the relationship piece I feel like I've I've got my brown or black belt there but um, my financial freedom you'll hear me do videos about empower network that's my journey to financial freedom and my goal is to share this with it with people and inspire them and help them to achieve total freedom that is my probably one of my highest if not my highest value is freedom as a human being and total freedom and I feel like now in the world we live in more than ever this is so important is to take charge and control of ourselves and get out of that old dependency mentality that many of us had or our parents had previous generations depending on outside sources to provide us with the life we want and we've got to go for it on our own now and we need to start now and I'm realizing this now you know at 41 years old going holy shit we gotta get going here so um, this is what I'm up to and part of freedom to me part of radical freedom one of the pieces is to me called radical love and that means first of all starting with love of yourself because if you don't have that love of self if your heart does not feel safe and nurtured and loved it's going to be constantly searching for it and you're going to see the effects of that in every other area of your life it will affect your relationships your business um, your leisure time your friendships it will manifest itself in many places and a lot of times people will feel stuck and I feel like it's because dig down deep under under the circumstances that appear on the outside it's really a deep longing on the inside for something and a lot of times I feel like it's love we're human beings that's what we're here for that's what we're made of that's what we want is love and what we need to understand is how to first of all provide that for ourselves because once we can feel secure with ourselves everything else comes a lot easier and you feel free and this is where the freedom piece comes in you feel free to do other things in your life because you're not your heart is not searching but anyway so that radical love is a whole piece that I plan to do blogs and videos on and if anyone is wants to know a particular aspect of this or looking for help on this and you have any questions or comments you want to see hey Jen you know I want to hear about your worst relationship ever and how you got through it because believe me <laughs> there are many stories there and I'm an open book I have no problem sharing and giving my story you know leave a comment below and let me know or send me an email connect with me on Facebook freedom seeker mama is my business page or my personal page Jen Russo Davis and you know and let me know let give me get in touch so back to um, the original question was someone had asked me how is it that you and your ex-husband get along so well I mean I have many friends who have gone through divorces and it's not so pleasant some is just sort of a cold distance or like a slight annoyance with each other and some like you know tense conversation others are you know knock down drag out arguments and just inability to communicate and just a really terrible stressful situation so people look at me and just like you guys are like dream ex-spouses like it's just you know my ex-husband and my um, my fiance Jason get along fine and um, you know we actually Jason and I actually live in the house 
that I was in with my ex-husband, you know, while we were married. So, and my ex-husband um, is okay with that, and he's fine with it, and we work with it. And my fiance Jason and I have two children; they're two and one, and he's okay with that. I mean, all of these things that have happened, um, he's accepting of, and so, and I'm accepting of whatever is going on in his life, and I don't butt in. Uh, and so people are like, how in the world do you do that? And, and here's the thing. First of all, I think every situation is different. So let's just say that in my relationship with my ex-husband, we were friends. We were good friends, and that's the way we should have remained. Um, so it wasn't hard to remember the feeling of being friends. And it's easy to sort of incorporate that into our divorce life. Although I don't advocate for a close friendship in the beginning, I'm still not... I wouldn't call us close buddies. I don't discuss a lot with him. I don't go in depth about my life. I feel like there needs to be boundaries when you're divorced. But still, um, we are able to tap into our ability to be friends because that's what we did best. But anyways, I feel like the first thing you need to do, if someone's going to ask me for practical tips on how to get along with your ex-spouse, the first thing I would say to you is get over it. Detach from any emotion regarding your divorce regarding the circumstances what you got divorced from. Now, that being said, I know there are extreme cases, I mean, physical abuse, emotional, severe emotional abuse, and maybe addictions or things like that, where if that was the case for me, I probably would have a hard time having a friendly relationship with someone who I didn't feel was safe. I wouldn't feel safe for my kids if someone was abusive. So not every situation could that apply to. I'm talking about your average run-of-the-mill divorce. I had to say that, right? But um, where there aren't major, major issues. And I would even venture to say with infidelity, get over it. You know, get over it. It happened and let the person go because if they really truly loved you authentically from the heart, being their authentic selves, infidelity or cheating wouldn't even be an option. Wouldn't be a thought wouldn't be an option. I don't care how smoking hot the other person is. It's just not an option. So just get over it and detach emotionally from the situation. Because if you don't, you're going to carry that resentment and those feelings into your every interaction and your children will pick up on it. Even if you think, oh, I'm not fighting with them. They're not seeing us fight. So they don't know what's going on. Well, they do. They're sensory beings, they're intuitive beings, they're better at it than we are as adults because I think we lose that sense over time unless we really work at it. So they know, and so detach yourself. Just be neutral. Be as neutral and businesslike as you can. doesn't mean disrespectful and nasty. It just means neutral. And so this, that leads me to the second thing, and why you want to be neutral is, number two, make it all about the children. And bottom line, period, that's it. It's all about the children. So that means you work together to make their lives as easy as possible and as less, least amount of stress they, don't, they have to deal with. So that means your communications are civil. That may even mean that you have to move within a close proximity of each other because visitation is a big thing and it's hard to do if you live far apart let's face it it's stressful the drive and the cost of gas and the children being long trips in cars and going back and forth to two houses that you know and just being very far away if, if you need the other person's assistance it really helps to remain in close proximity of, of each other and that's my number three so yes it needs to be all about the children and keep in mind that their best interests are number one and so you want to make it as easy as possible and number three is I would suggest living in close proximity it helps if you're nearby I'm not saying be next door neighbors and have a duplex together but it helps if both parents can be actively involved in the children's lives they know where they're going to school they know their teacher they've all they can have the ability to go see a school event if need be and like I said they don't spend half their weekend in the cars driving back and forth and all of those things. It just makes it a lot easier logistically and, and that's part of it too, having a smooth divorce. The logistics, you, you need to share custody. At least here in New Hampshire, it's 50-50 custody is usually the way they try to go around here. But the nice thing is, even though we have that on our agreement with the courts, behind the scenes at home we can make up our own schedule and my children are lucky that my ex-husband chooses to be extremely active in their lives and that's the way he wants it. So um, he comes over 
a couple of nights a week and he'll take them out to go somewhere. It's not just a, oh, Wednesday night and every other weekend type of thing. Um, and so that makes it even better and that makes it a lot easier. Um, the next thing is, number four, I would suggest, and this is a tough one, but try to avoid conversations about money if you can. And from a, a woman's perspective, try to avoid asking for money if you can, because I will tell you, no matter how friggin' friendly you guys are in how amicable your separation divorce is, get a man in court, put a man with his back against the wall and demand money out of him, and you're going to see the ugliness come out. And, you know, men, I love you. I love men. They're great. I mean, this is no insult. This is, this is the truth. And I've never seen any money conversations during a divorce proceeding go smoothly. It's just guys do not like to give their ex-spouses money. They don't want to hear about it. They get resentful and pissed off. They don't like it. So be prepared there. Be emotionally prepared for an argument and for a tough time when you're splitting up assets, talking about money. Now, luckily, in my situation, we didn't really have much to split up. There wasn't much to go on. Um, I was a stay-at-home mom, and he's a teacher, so his salary is pretty low, unfortunately. Um, uh, you poor teachers out there. That could be another blog, too, actually. Um, but there wasn't much to split up. There wasn't much to haggle over. So not these huge retirement accounts to split up. So it was. So we were lucky, and because I could already see the ugliness that came out of my ex-husband talking about money, he did not want to pay me child support and and or alimony. And even though we were friendly, now in New Hampshire, child support is determined by your incomes. So if you know the husband makes more than the wife and they're both working, the husband will pay, but it only is pays so that her salary matches his. So in our case, when we were divorced, I had gotten a job at the time that pretty much made us equal in salary. So there was no child support. It was considered a wash because we both made the same amount of money. So, uh, and unfortunately I was laid off at the end of 2010, but I still didn't ask him for any extra money because you know what folks, it's not worth it. I know that if I asked for money in child support that things would have gotten tense and stressful. I mean, the man's a teacher anyway, so that would have probably been a hardship on him to begin with. And then we would have lost that, that civil relationship that I think is so important for the children. Number two is back. It's all about the kids. I need to keep things, keep the peace as much as I can, as much as reasonable. And I felt like, okay, so let me make another deal behind the scenes, right? Instead of going back to the court and saying, well, I'm not working. He needs to pay me. What I did was I, I pulled him aside and said, look, I'm not going to ask you to pay me. I'm not going to take you to court. What I do ask is that if the children need clothing, if they need school supplies, any extra things, or if they're hoping to take any extracurricular lessons like uh, hockey or horseback riding, that you're paying for them and that you're taking them. I have two young babies, so you know, it's hard, harder for me to get around to all of the lessons and such. And he agreed, and that was a great agreement. And it kind of works out. I mean, it's, you know, like I said, he's a teacher, so it's not like I'm getting, you know, it's... I'm not looking for a jackpot. I'm not looking to make money off the man, okay? I'm trying to just be fair and civil and do what's right in my mind. It lets me sleep at night. So that was our agreement. He agreed to give me the financial help, to, <clears throat> excuse me, to pay for children's things in other areas, which I thought worked out perfect. So, and it kept the peace. So there we go. And the last thing I would suggest is, is to just have clear boundaries with each other. Just have clear boundaries. I mean, like I said, we're good friends, but I don't go and disclose or discuss things about my relationship with Jason, my fiance now. I don't talk about our personal life or what we're dealing with or our financial situation or anything like that. I talk about the kids and I may say, oh, this is what I did this weekend, but I don't get too in depth and not because I don't like him. I mean, eventually maybe we'll be closer down the road, but for now I have no interest in that. I think there needs to be a healthy boundary. The relationship is over. That separation needs to be there. Um, he does need to knock at the door when he comes into to this house, even though it was his house. There is a family living here now, and we need to respect that as if, same thing as if he had um, a, a girlfriend and, and it was a serious relationship and they were getting married and they had children together. I would need to respect that. And even though he doesn't, I still don't just walk into his apartment. I knock, and I, and I have boundaries now, and I think that's healthy. And as long as you're standing in your truth, and this is, you know, 
<clears throat> what is so important in all relationships and people need to understand is standing in your truth is so important and when you do that you can't go wrong and all of your relationships will fall into place the way you need need them to and you don't standing in your truth and speaking your truth doesn't mean you have to be nasty and if someone looks fat in those pants I'm not gonna say hey you look wicked fat in those pants I mean that's just as rude and this is mean and, and I'm not I have no desire to cut anyone down like that that's that's I, you know I'm not no I could say simply something like I don't know if those pants are the most I don't think they're the most flattering on you maybe we should try something else let's try something else and see what it looks like it, it's you know honesty but done with integrity and love and caring and I carry that into my divorce so there it is there are my tips for today on how to get along with your ex-spouse and I hope you found them helpful if you want to leave any comments below please do and you can click on my link and you can see like I said it's under construction uh, work in progress but I plan on documenting my journey to radical freedom and total freedom and if you want to hear any more about this um, like I said so far I've sort of touched upon and given a preview radical love and 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 radical love is um, one of the facets of freedom that I want to focus on and there are many pieces to that even there are relationships love for yourself um, I feel like your relationship to money the love for money because and financial freedom that's a piece of radical freedom but I think it falls under love if you love yourself you're taking care of yourself financially um, body mind and spirit so I will be expanding on this over time and like I said if there's anything in particular you want to hear about leave me a comment below contact me on Facebook or email and let's chat and I would love for you all again to join my team any of you out there who are looking to are you're, you're in a divorce you're about to get a divorce you're coming out of it and you're a stay-at-home mom or you're in a new position financially and you're like oh my god what am I gonna do contact me I've been there I got through it I'm getting through it and join my team I would encourage you to join my team and work on financial freedom with me and wow I'm rambling now so <laughs> I am going to say goodbye have a wonderful day and take care of each other